Hi, I'm Steve Clemens at the New America Foundation. I'm here with a friend of mine, Richard Vague. Uh, Richard was formerly CEO of First USA Bank, one of the largest commercial institutions in the United States, and he's chairman of American Respect. Um, he's a conservative, uh, a bit disaffected in the environment we're in right now, and we've been talking a bit about the Iraq War and the economy. And I wonder if I might chat with you a bit, Richard, about your views on what you see going, seeing going on with the price of oil, what's driving the price of oil, what's hitting the American middle class, and what your concerns about the American economy are right now. I'd love to. You know, when the, um, w on the eve of the invasion of Iraq, oil was at $30 a barrel. It's now at $130, $140 a barrel, depending on the day. A lot of folks are attributing that to the rise in demand in China or India, when in fact world increased demand for oil this year versus last year is 1%, and the year before that was 1%. 1% increase? 1% increase. And in fact, you know, you see in places like Japan where there's a 3.5% decrease in energy consumption. The European Union, the decline was 2.8%. In the United States, energy consumption is actually slightly down the last two years. So it's hard to fathom that a 1% per annum global increase in energy consumption could actually increase the price of oil from $30 to $130. Uh, instead, what has been happening is that there's a risk premium in the price of oil, and secondly, uh, we've been inflating the currency, just as we did in the 70s to finance a war. And that inflation itself, more dollars chasing the same amount of goods, is one of the principal drivers of energy price increases. So when you're talking about the war, tell me, tell me exactly what you mean, in, in, in inflating the dollar to pay for a war, the Iraq war I assume, but, but could you go further? Yeah. What we've done is we've financed a war that has cost at least a trillion. Some people can claim more than a trillion to finance a war. And we've done that in the face of a tax cut and interest rates that have actually declined. Well, you can't finance a war of that magnitude, the second most expensive war in America's history, with a tax cut and with low interest rates, unless you are, quote unquote, printing money. And that's what we've been doing. We've been growing the money supply far in excess of GDP. That's weakened the dollar against the euro and other currencies, and that's one of the biggest components in explaining the price of oil today. Why do you think in Republican circles, which you run, aren't more American businessmen making that case, or at least hearing John McCain respond to that case in Republican circles, since there's so many, I, I would assume, Republican businessmen and CEOs that see these same trends? Well, I'll tell you, it's, it's a little bit of a mystery because the Republican Party historically has not been the party of war. The Republican Party was elected to get us out of Vietnam. The Republican Party was elected to get us out of Korea. But this time around, I think primarily because of the, the choices that George Bush made, the Republican car Party has gotten linked to this Iraq war. And so I think there's an allegiance to the cause of this war in spite of the fact that the hard numbers are telling us that the Iraq war has severely damaged our economy. In January 2009, we have a new president, a new team, might be John McCain, might be Barack Obama. If you had the ability to prescribe an outcome, given how things are today, what would be some of the things you'd do to get the economy back in shape, get oil at a manageable price, deal with the dollar? What, what would be on your laundry list? Well, I think the easiest and best thing we can do for the economy, since we are running such large deficits, is pull down our defense expenditures considerably. Let's take care of America's balance sheet. Let's take care of America's dollar. And the easiest place to do that is to pull back on expenditures in Iraq. That's prescription number one. I think there's a couple of other things that inevitably must be true. And I think the first among those is the Fed needs to defend the dollar. And the primary way to do that, unfortunately, as happened at the end of the 70s, is we need to have higher interest rates. We need to have, our interest rates right now are actually negative, below uh, the uh, CPI. So we need to push up interest rates a little bit. That's a tricky thing to do in a world where you've got a real estate crisis such as we have. So we may not be able to do it tomorrow. But soon, as we emerge through this real estate problem, 
we need to start taking care of America's currency. Richard, thanks very much for being with us and sharing your thoughts. Uh, we're going to be back with Richard Bate talking more fully about, about a paper he's written at the New American Foundation in short order. We'll be sure to let folks know about it. Thank you, Richard. Thank you very much.